guys. I'm trying something new today with my sisters with me. I have, instead of the pillow in my lap, I have a lap desk on top of that to try to like raise it up a little bit. But I'm not sure the camera angle is going to work. So hopefully this will work out. I think it's a little bit closer so y'all going to get more of my chubby hands. <laughs> but my, um, the stand that holds my phone, it only goes so high so... I don't think I can get it. Okay. Maybe that's a little better. Okay, so I'm working on Winter Rose Manor. This is 25 count Prim Lugana by Lori Holt. And today, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the little tree trunks. And then I'll probably move up to work more on this basket. Um, it's going to be a little bit harder to do while I talk, but we'll give it a shot so the trunks of the trees are let me find my little color card um weeks palomino i should know that by heart by now because that color is used a lot okay so what i did now my floss is a little messy but when i first did the um kitted this up is I photocopied this is the um, key so I took scissors and I cut out the little symbols this is a different copy that I keep in my bag and then I taped them to the floss so that I was double checking every time I used to floss because some of these colors are really close like Oscar and Olive let's see this is this is Oscar. Let me find Olive. It is very close. Here's Olive. So, you know, they're really close. So, just to be careful, and some of the reds are close too. So, let me get back to my Palomino. Okay. I'm a little later today getting started. It's not super late, but it's a little later. Parker's up. He's over. Now, this piece is really short. I'm not going to use that. He's over there reading his book. He's got his headphones on. And he found a new series that he likes at the library yesterday. We went, my mom had a doctor's appointment. And let me look at these. I think if I can find a darker one, I think darker would be better. Which it is variegated, but I think this one's a little bit darker. It'll pop more. My mom had a doctor's appointment with the spine doctor, so it was, um, if she has a long doctor's appointment, we can just drive back home and then pick her up when she's done, but this one I didn't think was going to be that long because it was more of an initial exam. So the library, uh, the main branch of our county library is just down the road. I'm looking for a needle. Okay, I had to help Parker, so I had to get up, readjust, move everything, move everything back. So I hope this angle's okay. So where I was, I was getting my thread ready. I'm gonna put, well, my thread um, conditioner disappeared, okay. So I was talking about the library. So my mom had a doctor's appointment, so the library's right down the street from there, like maybe half a mile. It's the main county library, and then we have a smaller branch of our town. Anyway, I said, well, we'll go down there and hang out because it's nice and air-conditioned and everything. And um, so we went in there, and I thought they would, you know, I went to the children's section, and they had removed every single chair and table for safety you know because of COVID so I said is there anywhere we can sit down because I had brought my cross stitch and I was going to get a book for Parker and she was like well if you go upstairs there's a couple seats so I said okay so we go upstairs and they happen to have a I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna carry this but because it's so far I'm actually gonna run it through some threads to keep it from being completely loose just like that 
There's a teen center, and he's about to turn 11, so he's not a teen, but there's some series up there that are appropriate for his age, so I said, okay, so we'll go to the teen center, see if you find a book you want, and see if we can find a chair to sit down in. So we went upstairs, and the teen center was really nice. I had never been in there. It's just a separate little room with, you know, its own collection of books. And now these are closer, so I'm not going to do anything when I carry. I'm just going to go straight over. Just make sure I don't pull too tight. So he found um, he found a couple books he liked. And we went over and I asked the librarian, because I still couldn't find anywhere to sit. And I asked the librarian that was upstairs, I said, is there anywhere we can sit? And she's like, you go all the way to the back. So we went all the way to the back and... We go to the library a lot for homeschool, but we never go up there because it's basically the reference area and we always go to the children's area. And the only time I go up, I've been upstairs is to get a cookbook or something. But, um, so it was really nice. It was like this big open room with windows all around it and they did have plenty of chairs. But it was different and I don't think Parker really liked it because it was really open and echoey. And he was like, oh, I want to go. I was like, okay. So I had gotten about 10 stitches into my cross stitch. And um, by that time, my mom called and she was done. So <laughs> that was our trip to the library. But he did find a series that he really likes. So he wants to go back today and get, because um, it's an anime, like graphic novel. So he wants to go back today and get the next three or four books in that series so that's good so I've started doing my homeschool planning I hope you guys can see this I've started doing some homeschool planning with this year is easy for homeschool planning because in a lot of the subjects pretty much almost every subject we're just picking up where we left off last year so and then as he completes that we just move on to the next level so it's been fairly easy. Um, probably the most challenging part, and it's not hard. It's just it's just a little challenging. Is choosing what literature we're going to read because um, I, <laughs> the reason it's hard is because I love books so much. Like I want to I want to do them all, and we can't do them all. So I'm thinking, okay, what are the must read books for him for this year you know like last year we did charlotte's web which was just wonderful and you know um just pretty much what literature we're gonna do i'm still choosing that because there's so many amazing books and we can't do them all we just can't it's impossible okay so i've got all those in there so hopefully the weather cooperates um, his birthday is next week on the 5th, which is a Thursday. But, I'm going to try to have him a little pizza party at the park on Sunday evening. It's so hot here, we can't have a birthday party during the day, like other times of the year. So, we're going to try about 6 o'clock in the evening. And hope that the shade from the trees and, the, you know, the sun going down a little bit, it won't be as bad. Um, and then on his birthday, I want to, uh, take him to the water park. It's about an hour away. So it's a nice water park. Not too big. Perfect size for us to take him. So hopefully weather will cooperate. If the weather doesn't cooperate, we'll just have to, I don't know what we'll do. So moving on, I'm going to just take a look at my pattern. So... My choices are to continue working my way like this, or I can just go in and do a little motif today. So I think, since I'm doing a stitch with me, I think probably my best bet is to do this little motif, because I'm worried that if I do these flowers, I'm going to mess them up because I'm talking. So there's a little heart right there, so I think that's what I'm going to do. So, oh. Show you pattern. Um, so let me find that heart. Here it is. So that is in Wood Rose. 
Gentle Arts Wood Rose, which is this color. It's really pretty. And once um, I'm done with this, I'm going to start, I think, my Hands Across the Sea, which is my first Hands Across the Sea pattern, Tom's Foolery. I love that pattern. That's tangled, so I'm just cutting the edge off of that. I'm going to straighten this out. I love that pattern, so it takes a ton, ton of DMC. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, because I, I work in the right and I work my way this way, I'm going to get the DMC I need for this area that I don't already have. And it's, I think I'm going to stitch it uh, one over two, so it won't need a ton of DMC. So if I already have the color, I'm not going to buy it. So I'm just going to get the colors for like the top right corner and start there. And that way I can kind of spread the cost around a little bit. Okay. So, let me pull this over here. And the easiest place for me to start is to go up through the chimney. So, I was thinking... That I have mentioned that my husband is the mayor on here a couple of times a few times and I mean more than a few times it's a big part of our life but anyway I was gonna kind of talk about that because I think if you don't know anybody who does something like that is a misconception of what okay now here's gonna be the challenge with this lap desk is trying to do it where you guys can see it okay so I gotta count one, two, and it's the third one. So, I may have to go back to my pillow arrangement next time. This is really awkward. I thought this would help, but it's really weird. Because the lap desk is, like, tilted. So, um, I'm just going to do the best I can. I think you guys are probably looking at your stitching anyway. And next time, I'll go back to my pillow. So... Let me see how much time I have to go into this. Okay, I got plenty of time. So, how he became mayor is... Get your coffee. I gotta get my throat wet. <laughs> he was wor He worked at a grocery store here in town for 20-some years. And working at that grocery store, he was the produce manager, and he did other management stuff. He got to know, because we're a small town, he got to know everybody. He knows everybody. And they would come in and get their groceries, and he would talk to them. And he is a talker. I mean, my husband, when we, if, we haven't been on vacation in a long time, but we would go to the beach, and he would just talk to everybody. And it's funny, because... Like, they'd be from, like, New York or New Jersey or something. And he'd be like, hey, how's it going? And he, they'd be wearing, like, some kind of shirt. And he'd start talking to him, And they'd just look at him like, who are you? <laughs> he is, like, a talkative Southern guy. He just loves talking to people. And he loves to talk about 96. So, anyway, he loves 96, our town. And um, he was working at this grocery store. And the Chamber of Commerce needed somebody to represent the store on, on the chamber of commerce so the owner of the store asked him to do it so he started going to the chamber of commerce meetings and represent the store well he quickly um at this time he was finishing up his bachelor bachelor's degree in history and um he went back to school at a at an older age and Parker was little. I can't remember how old he was. He was like maybe three or something. So, he he had a minor in political science, which being mayor is not, in our town, it's, it has nothing to do with politics as far as like what you think about as far as state and national politics. It's not like that at all. 
anyway, um, so he started doing the Chamber of Commerce stuff, and like super quick, they voted him president of the Chamber of Commerce, and he started doing those duties, and he was really good at it. And some people in the town were like, you know, the mayor election is coming up. You should run for mayor. And he was like, because the guy who had been mayor had been mayor for like, he had been mayor for 18 years, but it was split up. So he had been mayor for like 11 years, and then somebody else was mayor, and then he was mayor for like 8 years. So I guess, or not 11, that doesn't make sense. It's four-year term, so whatever. Y'all know what I mean. <laughs> he'd been mayor for three or four terms. Let's see. Four. four or five terms he'd been mayor. So, he was getting out of that. So, the guy who was mayor was running for... He was stepping down as mayor, and he was running for town council. And so, these people um, asked my husband, Mike, to run for mayor. So, we talked about it, and we prayed about it, and he was like, you know, I love 96. I really want to help the town. I want to, you know, help bring businesses in. I want to help, you know, update things and all this and fix some of these issues. Because I'm just going to be honest. It was a good old boy system. I, I think most of y'all know what I mean when I say that. Um... You know, it it was all about who you're friends with and as far, you know what I mean? And my husband is not like that at all. He was like, his campaign was no more good old boy system. We're not going to do that anymore. We're going to, you know, get this town up with the times and do things the way they should be done legally. So he won. He won that first term and... He thought that being mayor would be kind of like being on the Chamber of Commerce. That it was more about bringing businesses to town and helping, you know, revitalization and getting grants and things like that. Well, he realized on his first day <laughs> that that is not what being mayor is about. I'm going to tell you what being mayor is about in a town like this. You are a, basically, you're a manager. Okay, let me, while I'm yapping my mouth, let me make sure I don't do this wrong. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So, now, I make the little heart shapes. Basically, um, he, Okay, he may, he is over the department. So the two, well, there's, there's the street and sanitation. Street and sanitation are the people who cut the grass, pick up the trash, clean the town, trim the trees, um, do maintenance on the buildings, you know, things, maintenance, basic maintenance, things that don't have to be contracted out, like electrical work and things like that. Um, so they do all the town maintenance grounds, landscaping, buildings, all that stuff. That's street and sanitation. So that's one department. So he, there's a, there's a supervisor for that department and then he is their supervisor. Then you have the police department. So you have the chief of police who is the supervisor of the police department. And then the, my husband is the supervisor of the chief of police. You have the town clerk who does all the paperwork and I, court stuff, um, all that, which is a huge job, and then he's their supervisor. And then you have town council, which is an elected position. Our town has six town council members that are elected from different areas of the town by the people that live in those neighborhoods within town limits. And so his main job is employee management. And the second main job is budgets. So, they're constantly doing budgets all the time. So, that's what he spends the majority of his time doing. And, unfortunately, the employee part is, like, 
Now, I have to say, the people who work directly under him are wonderful, 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 wonderful people. I love him to death. But the problem is, you got other people who cause problems. And he spends a lot of time putting out fires, you know. But when he first became mayor, people thought, like, they'd say, Oh, I've known Mike my whole life. He'll get me out of this ticket. All I gotta do is call Mike. He's my buddy. And let me tell you what. He has not gotten anybody out of a ticket. He is like Mr. Ethics. Do not call him asking him to get you out of a ticket. Because you know what he's going to say? He says, that's obstruction of justice. <laughs> if a police officer wants to show up at court and say that they're dismissing a ticket, that's their decision. But he absolutely will not ask anyone to dismiss a ticket, dismiss a fine. Um, he says, that's obstruction of justice. And it is. And see, what happened is, for years and years and years, pretty much the whole history, if you knew somebody, you could say, oh, I, you know, Joe Bob's cousin or whatever, get me out of this ticket. And then they would do it. So, he put a stop to that. Now, whoever becomes mayor next time, I don't know what they'll do. But I can tell you what he does. He follows the law. So I'm proud of him for that because it's not easy. When you've been friends with somebody your whole life and they've not, or, you know, some of these people are 25, 30 years older than him. My husband's 46. And they're like, son, I've known you since you was, before you was born. I knew your mama. You know what I'm saying? And he has to tell them that he can't help them. They get mad. And, you know, that's just the way it is. So. But the thing is, you can't do it for one person and not do it for everybody because it's not fair. And that's what he said from the beginning. He's like, I can't do it for one person and not do it for somebody else. So, anyway, he works his day job. He gets off work there at 3.30 and he drives straight to town hall. And then he works at town hall. If he gets home before 6.30, I have a shock face. He's usually there between 6.30 and 8.00. So, and he goes, he leaves for his job at 6.30 in the morning, so he's gone usually from for about 14 hours a day. And then on days when he does come home at like 6, his phone rings for a couple hours, like, and then on the weekends, like this past weekend, he had a ceremony to go to on Saturday, a ceremony to go to, or, you know, not always ceremony, sometimes it's meetings, to go to on Sunday. So, then he's doing it seven days a week. And the pay for a mayor is $300 a month. <laughs> a month. And he pays taxes out of that $300. So, he basically works for about 2 or $3 an hour as being mayor. It's pretty much a volunteer position. So, um, yeah. <laughs> it's a big commitment. And I think that they should be paid more um, for, you know, what they do. And that's why a lot of people who do it are retired. But because they're retired, um, you know, they have a different point of view than somebody who's a little bit younger. So, you know, it's, it's a thing. So if you're curious about the politics in your town... Um, it's probably similar now. Bigger cities, they have city managers. So, a city manager handles a lot of that stuff. So, the mayor just basically signs off on it. Um, but, a town as small as ours, there's no city manager. So, yeah. But, um, the good thing is, is, see, he's been mayor for six years. Seven. This is, this is the middle of his seventh year. Um, he has really, really done some really great things. He has updated a lot of policies along with town council. He has improved so many departments. Um, you know, both the street sanitation and the police department have undergone major pay raises, major equipment upgrades, all that stuff, um, because the budget has been managed better and they have allocated money in a better way let's just put it that way so um 
Now, that has, it hasn't been without problems. There's been a lot of issues. So, you know, there have been some really, there's been some really tough days. Um, but all in all, I think he has a lot to be proud, for, proud of. And when Parker grows up, you know, he has a lot to be proud of for his dad and what he's done. And that makes me proud. So, um, with that being said, when when his term is over, <laughs> I'm gonna, I told him uh, we're going to have a huge party. Because <laughs> his last day will be uh, New Year's Eve um, of that year. Let's see. I guess it would be 2023, New Year's Eve. I'm like, we are renting out this place and we're going to have a huge party <laughs> for your last day. <laughs> we're going to celebrate. I mean, seriously. So... Um, anyway, so, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me if, if, you know, you want to know more about how small town CD politics work. Um, let me see where my time was. 22. I have time to do something else. Let's see here. Hopefully I'm not showing the chart. I tell you what I can do. I see these three. I never went back. Now that's loose. I may have to pull that out completely. That right there, because I don't, I don't know what happened, but it's maybe it's just a loose thread. Let me check it. I hope I don't have to redo it. Let's see. It's right here. No, it's definitely loose. So, I need to pull that out as a reminder to go in later and fix it. Let's see. Um, yep. I need to repair that. So, I'm not going to do it right now. I'm just going to pull that out. Oh, you guys can't see. This right here came loose. So, what I'm doing is I'm pulling out where I'm close my threads so that I'll know to go in and fix that. I don't know what happened there. Now Stormy grabbed this yesterday and I thought she grabbed over here but she could have grabbed this. That might be what happened. So I need to redo this flower. Um, okay. So that's pulled out enough to remind me to go back and fix that. Alright guys, I'm going to end here. I hope you have a great day. My one year floss tube anniversary is... Aww. <laughs> Stormy's here. Hey Stormy. There you go. My one year floss tube anniversary is, I think, tomorrow. So, I'm going to try to film a whip parade for that. Hopefully it works out. If I can't do it on the exact one year, I'll do it. I'll do it soon. But that's what I do. And Stormy says, Hey guys, I know you can't see me because I'm upside down. Yeah. She's a crazy cat. Alright guys, I hope you have an awesome day. Thanks for joining me. Bye.